friends today we will study about restriction and the nucleases welcome back to the just five tips the first question is what's the need to cut dna at a specific points gene cloning requires that dna molecule be cut in a very precise and reproducible fashion this is illustrated by the way in which the vector is cut during construction of a recombinant dna molecule each vector molecule must be cleaved at a single position to open up the circle so that new DNA can be inserted. A molecule that is cut more than once will be broken into two or more separate fragments and will be of no use as a cloning vector. Further, each vector molecule must be cut at exactly the same position on the circle. Random cleavage is not satisfactory. Often it is also necessary to cleave the DNA that is to be cloned. There are two reasons for this. First, if the aim is to clone a single gene, which may consist of only two or three kg of DNA, then the genes can have to be cut out of the large DNA molecule. Second, large DNA molecules may have to be broken down simply to produce fragments small enough to be carried by the vector. Most cloning vectors exhibit a preference for DNA fragments that fall into a particular size range. Most plasmid vectors, for example, are very inefficient at cloning DNA molecules more than 8 kb in length. Purified restriction and the nucleases allow the molecular biologists to cut the molecules in the precise, reproducible manner required for gene cloning. The discovery of restriction and nucleases. The initial observation that led to the eventual discovery of restriction and the nucleases was made in the early 1950s when it was shown that some strains of bacteria are immune to bacteriophage infection phenomena known as host control restriction. The mechanism of restriction is not very complicated even though it took over 20 years to be fully understood. Restriction occurs because the bacterium produces an enzyme that degrades fast DNA before it has time to replicate and direct synthesis of new fast particles. The bacteria's own DNA the destruction of which would be coarse lethal is protected from attack because it carries additional methyl groups that block the degradative enzyme action. These degradative enzymes are called restriction and nucleases and are synthesized by May, perhaps all species of bacteria. Over 2500 different ones have been isolated and more than 300 are available. Their different classes of restriction and nucleases are recognized is distinguished by a slightly different mode of action. Type 1 and 3 are rather complex and have only a limited role, whereas type 2 restriction and the nucleases are the most important cutting enzymes in gene cloning. Type 2 restriction and the nucleases cut DNA at its specific nucleotide sequences. The central feature of type 2 restriction is that each enzyme has a specific recognition sequence at which it cuts a DNA molecule. A particular enzyme cleaves DNA at a recognition sequence and nowhere else. For example, the restriction and the nucleus called PBU1, isolated from Proteus vulgaris, cuts DNA only at CG8TCG. In contrast, second enzyme called PBU2 cut at a different healthy nucleotide known as CAGCTG. Many restriction and the nucleuses recognize healthy nucleotide target sites but others cut at 4, 5, 8 or even longer nucleotide sequences. SAU3A from Staphylococcus aureus strain 3A recognizes GATC and ALU1 arthrobacter nucleus cut at AGCT. There are also examples of restriction enzymes with degradative recognition sequence, meaning that they can cut DNA at any of the family of related sites. HINF1 from Haemophilus influenza strain RF recognizes GANTC, so cut set GAATC, GATTC, GAGTC, and GACTC. Let us study about blind plants and sticky ends. The exact nature of the cut produced by a restriction enzyme is of considerable importance in the design of the gene cloning experiment. Many restriction and the nucleases make a simple double-stranded cut in the middle of the recognition sequence, resulting in a blunt end or plush end. PBU2 and ALU1 are examples of blunt end cutters. On the other hand, restriction and the nucleases cut DNA in a slightly different way. With these enzymes, the two DNA strands are not cut at exactly the same position. Instead, the 
cleavage is staggered usually by two or four nucleotides so that resulting DNA fragments have short single-stranded overhangs at each end. These are called sticky or cohesive ends, as base pairing between them can stick the DNA molecule together. One important feature of a sticky end enzyme is that restriction enzymes with different recognition sequence may produce same sticky ends. BAM H1 and BG3 are examples, both produce GATC sticky ends. Same sticky end is also produced by SAW3A, which recognize only the tetranucleotide GATC. DNA produced by cleavage with either of these enzymes can be joined to each other as each fragment carries a complementary sticky end. Thanks for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe.